Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sean Marie, and I love to share all things homemaking with you, and that includes recipes that have bold and unexpected flavor profiles while being easy on the wallet. The dish I'm going to share with you today is a family favorite and one so full of unexpected flavor, even the pickiest of eaters won't be able to resist it. I'll be sharing these must-try recipes on my channel in a cooking series I'm calling I Can Totally Make That, because if I can totally make that, so can't you. And we're kicking that off today with a savory dinner option. This is a perfect meal for a snowy winter's day. Trust me, you're going to want to see this. Before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you'd give this video a like and a share. And if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and become part of our little homestead. Every view, like, comment, and subscription brings me so much pleasure and makes the daunting task of filming and editing worth it. Make sure you have that notification bell turned on so you'll know when I upload a new video and you can join the party too. Alright guys, let's jump right into today's ambrosial video, shall we? To start, I want to get my Instapot going with some white rice, but before I add it, I'm going to rinse it. You should always rinse white rice before cooking with it. This just removes the excess starch from the outside and makes the rice nice and fluffy instead of sticky. Also, it removes any dust or debris from the milling process, which is most certainly present on the rice. Leaving all that on the grains alters the flavor, and you're cheating yourself out of the true flavor of white rice, guys. So if you haven't tried rinsing it, give it a whirl. I guarantee you'll be rinsing it going forward. Now I'm going to add two cups of my homemade chicken stock and the Hippie Pilgrim garlic salt. And you guys, if you haven't checked them out before, I'll leave the link below in the description. Susanna's garlic salt and spices are out of this world and something you definitely need to check out. Seriously, she has so many options to choose from and you can't go wrong with anything you pick. Now that this is ready to go, I am going to lock the lid in place and be sure my valve is on seal. Then we'll turn the Instapot on to pressure cook. Set the timer for three minutes on high. Once the three minutes are up, we're just going to let it naturally depressurize for 10 minutes. Then we'll open up the valve to release any residual pressure and remove the cover to give a stir. You don't have to use an Instapot to make your rice if you don't have one. I just honestly find this to be the easiest, most foolproof way to make rice. It comes out perfectly every time. What's your go-to way of making rice? Do you use an Instapot, a steamer, or a good old saucepan on the stove? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'm using boneless pork chops for this recipe, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, while my pan is heating up with a little bit of oil in it, I'm going to season them on both sides with more of the Hippie Pilgrim Thanksgiving garlic salt, and I'm going to rub it in so that the flavor really holds on to that meat. Now that my skillet is hot and the chops are seasoned, I'm going to sear them in the pan for about 5 to 8 minutes on each side or until cooked the way you like them. This time depends on the thickness of your chops. I love the aroma of well-seasoned pork frying up. Heck, I love the aroma of well-seasoned meat frying up, period. But especially with the Hippie Pilgrim Thanksgiving blend on there, the aroma of the savory spices include notes of thyme, rosemary, sage, garlic, all of the yummy scrumptious smells that are happening in my kitchen right now and driving me crazy. But not to fear, this dish doesn't take long to put together whatsoever. Our rice is done and we are just going to let our pork chops finish up. We're more than three quarters of the way done with this meal and almost ready to eat. Are you hungry? Cause I know I am.
When the pork chops are cooked to your liking, remove them from the skillet and place them on a plate with a foil cover. We're just going to leave them there for the time being until we need them, so set them aside. All that flavor you see right there in the pan is not left behind. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that, some minced onion, some minced garlic, and a little Italian seasoning. And we're just going to let that cook for about one minute to release the fragrance and flavor of the onions and the garlic. Next, we're going to add some chicken stock. If you don't have homemade chicken stock on hand, I suggest using Better Than Bouillon. The flavor is a close second to homemade. Since the stock has reduced a little, we're going to add some heavy cream. If you're worried about calories, you can substitute the heavy cream for a little half and half. The results will be basically the same. Bring this to a simmer and adjust the salt and pepper seasonings to your liking. That's good. Mm, that is perfect seasoning. I'm hungry. Now we're going to add some fresh baby spinach and allow that to wilt. This might look like a lot in the pan, but I can assure you it's literally going to wilt down to nothing. Spinach is wilted. Cheese. Measure our cheese with love in this house. Give us a nice stir. The cheese really thickens the sauce up nicely. And I'm just gonna let this go for a few minutes until that cheese is nice and melted into that sauce. You guys, the aroma coming from this dish is like ambrosia in my kitchen. I can smell the parmesan in the garlic. I can smell the thyme in the sage. It is so good. You're gonna love this dish. This is a great way to get the kids to eat their spinach because it tastes so good in this dish they won't even know they're eating spinach. I'm going to add my pork chop drippings back. It's all flavor. We don't want to get rid of that. Got a nice mix. Now we're going to put our chops back in. And give them a nice turn to coat them in that sauce. And we are just going to let this reheat through again. Even though the pork chops have been tended, they're not as hot as I'd like. So I'm just gonna let this all come to temperature together and get ready to eat it. Now, because this dish is so rich and savory, we like to enjoy it with just a very simple little side salad and a homemade vinaigrette. And making a homemade vinaigrette is a lot easier than you think it is. You don't need any fancy equipment. I use a mason jar. In my mason jar, I'm just going to add a little red wine vinegar, some good Dijon, and some salt and pepper. Give that all a good shimmy shake. I'm going to use my immersion blender to blend this all together. And what I'm doing is slowly drizzling in the olive oil while I'm blending. And you definitely want to do this slowly so that they will all emulsify together. They'll bind and you will get the dressing you're looking for. If you dump it all in and then do it, it won't work. You have to add it slowly. If you like a Dijon infused vinaigrette, this is for you. This meal can be assembled in 30 minutes or less from start to finish, and I call that a mom win for those busy weeknights when you don't have time to put something together, but you don't want to sacrifice flavor. This is the perfect meal for you. Just look at this. I am so hungry, it's ridiculous. Let me tell you, this is so Ooh, good! The flavor in this sauce is neither boring or commonplace. This has bold, big flavors. The garlic, the parmesan, the thyme, the sage. Everything cohesively goes together and I can't take it anymore. I need a bite. Mm. Mm. 
fat is so savory, so creamy. Mm. The Parmesan, the spinach, the garlic, all of this comes together. I mean, if I am dreaming, don't wake me up. This dish is amazing, you guys. You really need to try this. This is not only a great dish for your family, this is also an impressive dish to serve your guests for a couple reasons. One, it's super impressive and filled with flavor. They will think you slaved in the kitchen all day long. And two, you know you didn't. It took you right around a half an hour to put this whole dinner together. That gives you more time with your guests and less time in the kitchen. This is a dish you didn't know you need in your life, but trust me, you do. Well, thanks so much for spending time with me again this evening, guys, on, on a playlist I am calling I Can Totally Make That, because if I can totally make it, so can you. I do hope you will give this dish a try for yourself. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You won't. So full of flavor, so savory, so delicious. Remember to click on the link in the description below and that will take you right over to my blog where you can get your free printable version of this recipe for your kitchen files. And trust me, you want this in your recipe collection. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, become part of our little homestead, and get in on all of this fun. Also, I know you all love to make the recipes that I share with you guys, and I love hearing about them. So when you make this recipe, drop a comment below and use the hashtag, I can totally make that. I love this vinaigrette on this salad. That Dijon mustard gives it such a tangy, delicious flavor. So simple and easy to make. <sighs> make this. That's all. Make this. Bye, guys. Can you try something? Yum, yum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is how you do it. No, I can't do that. Do you want to see this? Mmm, is that you, good? Can you hold this for long? No, I. No, you look like Gumby. Watch! Into my girl.